Hi, I'm Jamie Emlin with Mercedes Textiles. Today we're visiting our main plant and HQ offices here in beautiful Montreal, Canada. This is where we manufacture fire hose, couplings, innovate new products, perform R&D, and just about anything and everything to do with water delivery. Mercedes Textiles Limited, Dwayne Leonhardt, Vice President of Engineering Technologies, representing the Firehose Manufacturers Association, as well as powerhouse giants like the FDNY, the City of Boston, LA County, the ATF, all work directly together with the NFPA and UL for this new standard change. Today we will be performing what we consider to be one of the most important standard changes, which now includes a radiant and upgraded conductive heat test for all inch and a half to three inch attack hose. The head of our engineering department is setting up the test right now. Jamie, do you want to give me a hand? Sure, Saroosh. In a nutshell, the test includes pressurizing a 10-foot section of hose to a stable 150 PSI, making sure the hose stays dry. We then place it under a radiant heat source and measure how long it takes for the pressure inside the hose to drop 20 PSI and reach 130 PSI. The time is recorded but we leave the hose in place for another 10 seconds before we move the heat source away. This is only the first step in showing how our hose reacts when exposed to extreme heat. After the heat test, the hose will undergo a dynamic flow test. While the hose is pressurized to 150 PSI, we'll use a pump to see how much water is actually lost in gallons per minute. No hose will resist heat forever. Every hose has a time to leakage, but the most important thing is how the hose reacts to protect both itself and our first line responders. It's the continued water flow, the gallons per minute, that put out the fire and save lives. But we'll take a look at that a little later. Back to step one. We make sure to follow all the important steps required to set up and perform this test as intended by the NFPA NUL. We have the support frame with hose height adjustment for various sizes. We have the gas-fired infrared stainless steel heating element fed with a specific mix of propane and air using a pre-mix flow controller. We have our water-cooled Schmidt Bolter heat flux gauge installed on an adjustable height railing and a digital controller to allow very accurate and repeatable time and pressure measurements. The burner head should be three inches plus or minus 0.5 inches from the top of the hose. The top of the heat flux gauge should be perfectly level with the top of the hose to guarantee a uniform heat exposure along the sample. The standard requires all unique surfaces of the hose to be individually tested including striping, stencils and logos. The feature that results in the shortest time to 20 psi pressure loss will be tested two more times. Then the times from that feature will be averaged and reported. Now for the fun part, the actual test. Our hose has already been pressurized to 150 PSI and has been stable for more than one minute as required by UL. We start the burner head and adjust the mixture to get 30 kilowatts per square meter for a minimum of three minutes. This is very important as we need a uniform burn across the head, especially if previous tests have been performed and water has touched or entered the head. The heat flux gauge measures the amount of radiant heat in terms of millivolts and not degrees. Every calibrated sensor comes with a chart from the manufacturer to correlate the 30 kilowatts meter squared to millivolts. Hey, wait a second, why 30? That's a good question, Jamie. In determining the heat flux for the radiant heat test, the focus was on the initial stages of flashover. Some studies have shown that this value could range from 20 to 30 kilowatts per square meter. Now ultimately, 30 kilowatts per square meter was chosen as the target for this test. So generally, there are three distinct ways that hose reacts to heat. On one end of the spectrum, the hose construction reacts relatively quickly and allows some water to weep to seep out, which actually protects the hose against the ongoing heat and means the hose continues to provide the firefighter with water flow. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the hose will tolerate the heat for a longer period of time while the material is slowly deteriorating, 
which in many cases can lead to rupture or catastrophic failure without warning, which could leave the firefighter stranded without water. There is also hose construction that results somewhere in between these two situations, where various size of burn-through holes can develop. As you can see in this video, our Mertex line hose fits in the first category, where the leaking water aids the hose in maintaining its structural integrity, and ultimately, it increases the safety of the firefighter. Even without a pump behind the length of the hose, pressure loss is almost negligible. Now here's where things get really impressive. After the radiant heat test, we perform the flow test. Here at the water testing station, we're gonna take that hose, bring it back up to 150 PSI, and then measure the water leakage with a flow meter. Our hoses test with incredibly low gallons per minute water leakage. These UL tests are crucial in allowing Mercedes to see how our hose performs in real life situations. To see the full review of our test results, visit mercedestextiles.com. We always learn so much from hose testing. We take that learning and put it back into product development. Heat testing to the new standard is very important. But man, this hose has a ton of other impressive qualities and features. Better packing, lightweight technology, 210L warranty, lower friction loss, both the hose and couplings manufactured under one roof. Nobody tests hose like Mercedes, nobody.